Okay, so then you move to L.A. Yeah. Uh, in 2005, I guess? Uh, February 2006. 2006. Okay. So as someone that's made the move to L.A., I mean, in fact, I remember I made my first move to L.A. before I was established. Mm-hmm. I spent about six months there, mm-hmm. and I gave up. I moved right back to New York. <laughs> I'm like, this is this is ridiculous. The whole like fakeness and run around and everything. I got to experience it because there was no Vlad TV yet. It was just DJ Vlad, the mixtape DJ, and people were giving me the run around and wasting my time. And I'm like, okay, cool. I came back years later when I was established and I didn't really need anyone to, to help me. And it was it was okay. But saying that LA is a very rough place when you show up with no name, no reputation, no connections. You just got to figure it out because every day there's literally thousands of kids like yourself mm-hmm. showing up with those same dreams. And ultimately, most of them, it doesn't work out for. Mm-hmm. So you get there and what happens? So I'm going to say something to you right now. I'm going to say that this goes to everyone. All right. Say something to you right now. Mm-hmm. The fakeness of L.A., Anybody that talks about how fake L.A. was, that was your fault when you were out here because you were trying to do a Hollywood thing, right? And you were trying to build yourself up. And in building yourself up, what you were tapping into was the fake people of L.A. because that's what you thought you needed to do. When you were in New York, you made yourself and did whatever you had to do. And when you came back, you didn't need you didn't need any of those people. Now you're out here in L.A., the house, the Maserati, the family, all of that stuff you know what your tribe is. L.A. to me is not about how fake L.A. is. To me, L.A. exposes the person's inner fakeness. And it's not necessarily whether or not the person is fake. It's whether or not they can find something that's real here. And are you trying to find something that's real here? When I got to L.A., I did not automatically try to go to the top of the industry. I just tried to live in the city. I got a job as a game taper. I was, there was a video game show called Cybernet. I just wanted to be here. I wasn't trying to win. I wasn't trying to get on. I was just trying to be here as a person. There's a video game called Cybernet, video game show called Cybernet. Uh, I took a, I took a job, $500 a week taping video games. So I would come in in the morning. There would be a stack of video games. This is the best fucking job ever. I had to play the video games and put them on tape, then give them to the fucking um, editors or help them edit. And then we edit the video games for the show. Then I would write stuff. I would do all that. And that was the first job in production I had in LA. There was nothing in LA about it. I had to ride the bus. Um, first from here in Van Nuys. Oh, I don't want to say where you're at. I had, you can say yeah, Van Nuys. Yeah, cool. yeah, like I, had to, <laughs> I had to ride the bus from Van Nuys to Burbank at first. And then I moved. And I had to ride the bus from Pico and Fairfax all the way to Burbank. Every morning. Nothing glissy, no glamour about it. The people that I met in LA were real people that lived here that had all kinds of things that they were doing. I ended up going to going to the basketball court to hoop, to play basketball. I met all kinds of niggas on the basketball court. Like real people. Some actors and some other people like that, but real people. And I established a base of friends here. Um, people from all over the place that have all different types of diverse stories because I wasn't looking to get anything from anyone. I was just figuring myself out as I was here. And I think the first thing that I would say to people that come out here is when you come out here, be a person at first. The actor or the singer or whatever, go hoop, play basketball, meet people at the gym, go walk and run your cannon, be a be a person. And by the way, get out of Hollywood. Go where there's some real black people at. Hit Lamert on a Sunday or a Saturday. You know what I'm saying? Get down there to Long Beach. Get, get to where there's some real people at. And like, Curate your LA experience to bring the real out of the city. It's a real place, but some people gravitate towards the fake side of it. Yeah, and I, I get your point. Coming from New York, and you're trying to get that bottle service. No, I wasn't trying Vlad to get that bottle there. service. Vlad was up. Vlad was hitting Chris. No, I was Vlad, not. Vlad, was, Vlad was in Emerson. Vlad was trying to get that bottle service, and people weren't opening the doors. You're like, ah, oh, this is fake shit. Let no. me go back to New York. And then you came back. I bet you came back and you was established, and you came back and you started dropping your nuts on people, didn't you? Didn't you? No, I didn't. <laughs> I, 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 I did not. I did not. But but the thing is, I was already in the music industry already. You know, I was in New York. I was going to labels. I would be going to, mm-hmm. you know, Double XL and the source, you know, and I, I'd be, you know, 
going to studios and producers and so forth. And the one thing that I just noticed as the big difference between LA and New York is this. In New York, if you approach someone on a business level and you say, hey, listen, um, I want to do this type of business with you. And here is my initial proposal. And if you're interested, let's go ahead and have a meeting and see if it develops in, to some way. Mm -hmm. Someone in New York will say, you know, this doesn't really work for me. Let me explain to you why. I don't really want to do this. Let's not waste each other's time. And uh, we're just going to keep it moving. And, you know, if you don't like my answer and you get upset, then that's just what it is. I'm going to go forward. In L.A., they'll be like, oh, yeah, no, definitely. Let's set up a meeting tomorrow for 12 o'clock. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and these types of situations will happen over and over again where I just like, yo, like if you don't want to do business, just say you don't want to do business. But people in L.A. will always tell you yes, I feel. I feel it's almost like the culture. Always tell the person yes, because that's like the movie thing in a way. Like, oh yeah, let's let's not close the door to this potential thing. We're just going to keep them on ice and keep them strung along for a while, just in case we may decide to do this in the future. We're not really serious about it, but we'll go ahead and, and keep and keep this this guy's hope alive, even though we're not really seriously going to take you know this person's business you know very seriously. And I just went through that so many times. And I said, man, fuck this place. I went back to New York. And then when I came back to LA, which is where I live now for the last eight years, mm -hmm. and I just feel like I don't have to go through these types of situations with people anymore, and it just got easier for me. But like I said, that's my experience. You have your experience. No, 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 no. It's is it. I guess what I would say is, like, number one, I get people that hit me all the time that want to do stuff, especially now, and I really do want to do all of it. I really do want to do all of it. I really do. Like, I want to do all of the stuff. Sometimes you just can't. I, for me, I don't know that I experienced that much when I got here because I tell people this all the time. Like, nobody helped me when I got here. No one. I'll tell you the person that helped me. Tommy Talley. Tommy Talley is a white boy that I grew up with in Baton Rouge that runs an audiovisual company in Baton Rouge right now. He directs uh, video game moves, doing great, owns Airbnbs. When I first came out here, Tommy let me sleep on his couch. Tommy let me sleep on his couch for like a month, month and a half with him and his wife and their little baby in Hollywood. And that sustained me until I was able to get on my feet. But other than that, nobody put me on. Like, no, like nobody... Like I got jobs and then all through those jobs, like I ended up figuring it out, right? But I never, it, and that that's why it makes it hard sometimes when people go, yo, I just need a leg up. I just need help. I just need this. I need somebody to believe in me. I know we all do. Everybody does. Everyone does, right? But for me, to me, the people that last in the city are the people who don't go home after six months. The people who gut it out, figure it out, even if you working as a valet, even if you working as whatever, you just keep going there. You keep getting it. You keep doing whatever it is that you're doing. So it was just a different experience. Um, of course, there were people that told me that they were going to do certain things that they didn't do them. Of course. Of course, there were. Absolutely. I can think of big, huge names. I, when I was working for TMZ, I was stupid enough to when I first got on the street with my camera to believe that if I didn't shoot a celebrity, because sometimes celebrities will come and talk to you and they'll be like, oh man, I see you on the show. You're very talented, you know, no, no, whatever, whatever. I'm really looking and doing something in this whole thing, in this whole situation, this genre, maybe a true television show or like a sitcom based on this. Like rather than us do this interview right now, why don't you like uh, take my number down and send me over some ideas and we can build something out for you, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I did that a couple of times with people. I got snake oiled by people who just didn't want to be on TMZ that day. Hmm. And then after a while, I'm like, ah, fuck it. You know what I mean? And now yeah. when I see him, I jab him. And now there's one specific guy that I see him, I go, hey, are we still going to do that paparazzi show? Or is that just <laughs> bullshit so I didn't shoot you on the street? <laughs> right. And he's like, ha, 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 yeah, nigga. <laughs> yeah, I get you. Um, but so, yeah. So to me, uh, there's obviously fakeness about LA. But look, man. It was fakeness where I come from. The people were a lot realer overall, but it's fakeness everywhere. You got to just find and tap into the real. That's what I would say to people. Fair enough. Fair enough.